Previously on The Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 1, Mando and Grogu set out to bathe in the living waters of the minds of Mandalore. And now we're on to Season 3 Episode 2. What did you think of the episode? Uh, overall, I thought it was a 6 out of 10. wasn't my favorite episode of all time, but it right. wasn't bad. Um, I really enjoyed the exploration of Mandor. Mandor? Mandalore. Mandalore. Really enjoyed the exploration. I actually wanted more. Oh, yeah. I wanted more exploration, more machinery, more buildings. Um, during the exploration, I thought Din made some careless errors. I was annoyed at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted him to be more thorough as a Mandalorian. Weirdly, the episode felt rushed and slow at the same time. I know what you're saying. Yeah, like yeah, we rushed yeah. through the exploration. We rushed through the man, the, uh, exploring the caves and the tunnels, but it felt like it was slow paced. I was kind of mentally confused. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess overall, I wanted more Mandalorian lore. Like, what is this place? What did that do? What's that machine? What's that pipe? So, but overall, good episode. I enjoyed it. What did you think? Mandalorian lore is some of the best lore in all of Star Wars canon. It's just the stories of just absolute badassery. I love it. Mandalores. But yeah, so what did I think about the episode? It was a fun adventure episode. It's just with just exploring and running around and nothing really like too tense and emotionally ominous. Um, but there were huge implications. Huge implications. For example, when they're down in the mines and they, and they encounter that, that weird eyeball alien, um, there's so much Beskar on the ground. Like huge implications because in in the universe there's a bunch of Beskar, but it's it's all been mined out, and the most of it is in Imperial hands. So they're like scrounging around to find Beskar to find to make new armor for foundlings. So with all that Beskar in that one cave, they could they could fund a hundred, you know, a hundred new um, foundlings. But but that's just one cave. Perhaps there's other caves with other aliens. This could be the the source of the Beskar steel to rebuild the Mandalorian civilization. Also. We've now seen what Mandalorian, I guess, mm, architecture, <laughs> Mandalorian ruins look like, which suggests to me that they have some type of engineers, at least back in the day. And so we get to see not only the warrior side of Mandalorians, but there could be an entire civilization behind this. So overall, I would give this episode a 7 out of 10 because bo needs to keep her helmet on. What are you doing? Keep your helmet on. It's like part of being a Mandalorian. Like, keep your helmet on. I mean, not necessarily like all the time, but like combat ready. Keep it on. I have lots to say about that. Let's talk about it when we get to it. <laughs> Let's look into The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 2. Let's begin. Let's do it. So this is the person on Tatooine, the engineer slash maintainer slash mechanic. Mm-hmm. Her name is Moto. Pelo Moto, I think. <clears throat> I was like, she needs to invest in a concrete floor. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> just, just every time a ship lands, there's just sand and everything else. Everything. It's everywhere. You know, you cannot get it. All the grease and parts and crevices. That's right. Concrete floor. It's not like, like when sand hits your leg, when its legs dry and it just brushes off. It's like when, it, when sand hits your leg and when it's wet, it sticks sticks but not only that but like your wet legs your legs are separate when they walk we're talking about like jet turbines these are high precision high speed things that they really should not have gritty stuff grinding into them mm-hmm. concrete floor concrete floor concrete floor what are you doing yeah. clippy the rodian the rodian is ah the rodian is the customer is the customer yeah let's let's see what he does arts so he has these like octopus suckers on the end of his hands on the end of his fingers it could be super useful you're like moving stuff around real dexterous you could do all kinds of cool stuff with this but he doesn't use them he doesn't grab the thing from his thing he he, like grips it he doesn't even grip it with the fingertips it's like grabbing something with these part of your fingers like i was like use the suckers Use the suckers, you sucker. That's stupid. Use the ben, suckers. So that's, that's what they're for. Yeah, so let's watch it one more time. It's kinda it looks kinda odd once you it's like an elephant not using his trunk. Arts. It's Yeah. So then I looked up Rodians. Mm-hmm. Uh and 
I guess it's un it's unknown. He has regular fingers. Oh. That's from Wikipedia. So if there's any, any Star Wars fanatics out there, like what's going on with the suckers versus the fingers? Is it male, female? Is it what's going on? Did I get the species wrong? This looks like a Rodian. Looks like a Rodian. I wonder if this guy is a deformity that lets him hold on to lightsabers. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, if you had Maybe. suckers, you could, you know. That's true. You Can could do it? a you could do a grip, or you could do a dexterous sucker grip. You could never be disarmed. Yeah. Anyway, just notice that. This is Din Djarin's cockpit inside of its his Naboo starfighter. What you what did you see here? So, in the previous episode. Uh, Din was explaining to Grogu some of the components and dials and stuff. And he pointed to the upper left. There was like a fuel oh, gauge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, and right here. it's empty. Or off. Like, it's what's going on off. here? That's right. We don't know how much fuel he, he could be running on fumes. Yeah. It's just completely so, off. Din, this, turn on your gauge. This is risky. Yeah. They Super could get risky. stranded. Yeah. Mm. Like in your in your car... Or something you need fuel gauge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on at all times. You know, turn it on when you think you're close to empty. So, Did I tell you, uh, one of my motorcycles didn't have a fuel gauge. It it had an uh, an odometer, and you just had to count the miles. <laughs> all right. When when the sloshing goes away. Yep. Time to fill up. Time to fill up. <laughs> I never ran out of gas. This okay. So so. Din lands on Mandalore with Grogu and his R5 unit, and he's so mean to his R5 unit. Let's watch him. He's so mean. R5, I'm gonna need you to scout ahead and analyze the atmosphere. Okay. That wasn't a question. Mm. <laughs> Go over to that split in the rock and take an air sample of the ruins below. Please? Yeah. So mean. Obviously has feelings. Mm-hmm. Look, apprehension. Don't be a baby. Just get the samples we need and hurry up. Turns out his instinct, R5's instinct, was correct. Was dead on. Turns out Mando's management style is terrible. I wouldn't hate to work with him. Yeah. I think there's danger ahead. Don't be a baby. Don't be a baby. Shut the fuck up and get moving. Go in there that's maybe too poisonous for me and get it done. Get it done. Yo, dude. Like I could yeah. just give you a bad report and you die here. I take your ship. I I'm I'm the astromech. I fly the ship. That's right. That's right. Why is he be? Yeah. Why is he being mean to his astromech droid? What the? Heck? Like how are you gonna get home? He's your friend. He works with you. He's your buddy. Be nice to the R five. I didn't get it. I didn't. But get by it the way, me. quick question: Is that R five unit the same one from Episode four? I think so. The one that the one that Luke buys and like kind of blows up a little bit. I. <laughs> the Star Wars universe is so like incestuous. <laughs> it's got <laughs> not incestuous in like 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 sex. I mean, like I looked up where do the Mandalores come from, or when preparing for this, and so like the Mandalorians, they used to be these people called the Tong, T A U N G. They're super big warriors, two hundred kilograms. You know, they're really built. You know, like a football player. They came from Coruscant. Oh, why? Why? That's unnecessary. <laughs> Yeah. In any other universe, I would assume the R5 unit was some sort of mass-produced droid, mm -hmm. and this happened to be, mm -hmm. you know, the model that was available. Mm -hmm. But actually, they're on Tatooine, near where Luke did his thing, so it could be the same droid. It could be the same droid, and maybe that's why he's like, I don't feel good about doing stuff. Like the, the last guy is kind of uh, was risky. Mm, oh, can, I, yeah. can I just chill at the concrete starport? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo. In fact, R5 rigs a little thing of it in himself that explodes so he can avoid danger. Oh, that'd be super smart. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's like, my sensor is misaligned. I can't tell you if there's a poisonous. Please take me home. <laughs> I'm broken. Like, can I I'm go broken. home? Yeah. Yeah. Is that an oil bath? Hmm. Ooh. Ooh, it's smooth in mm -hmm. here. Ah, feels great. My gears. Yeah, yeah, that's an R5. That's what he says. <laughs> Every time he beeps. <laughs> yeah. Ah, down on this planet, this planet, Mandalore is damaged by fusion bombs, but... 
What? <laughs> Looks like the fusion bombs from the purge disrupted the magnetic field around the planet. I'm okay from with the that. surface, we won't be able to communicate with anyone out of atmosphere. I'm okay with that. Down here, we're completely cut off from the rest of the galaxy. Scary, but okay. Well, I'm not okay with that. Fusion bombs making magnetic fields. And okay, fusion bombs have made a magnetic field oh. that is so strong that light can't escape. Yet we can see the surface. What, 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 what? That's true. Yeah, yeah. You could just point a little flashlight. Blink, blink, blink. That would be communicating yeah. off-world. So maybe it's at the frequency his specific fighter works at. No communication. Hmm. Even though I don't know how fusion bombs would release a halo of radio suppressing stuff. That's right. Um, I I totally filled in blanks for him. <laughs> I was like I was like maybe the fusion bombs adds extra energy or messes up the the magma core and so the field lines change and all they're all messed up. Maybe it was an unclean fusion released radioactive charged particles or radioactive particles into the atmosphere, which then UV hits the upper atmosphere. Ionized creates all these charged ions in mm -hmm. the upper atmosphere, mm -hmm. which creates some sort of Faraday conducting cage around the planet. Oh, okay. 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 Although what I did not like <laughs> is, when, is when you look at the floor, it's like barely damaged. They look like like TNT explosions, not like fission bombs or even fusion oh. bombs. Like these need to be huge craters. Maybe they're tactical. Tactical fusion. Tactical fusion. I guess so. Just a little pink. It's like, it's like two, two single hydrogens. Pink. <laughs> right, which is... It's, you know, it's fusion artillery, but technically artillery. Technically artillery. Technically fusion. Technically. You know, we talked about this last episode about Din, like, hops out and from his from his starfighter in the rain and doesn't close it. Here? He's on it. He's on it. A little boop boop on the wrist. Yeah. That's all it took. He didn't even have to, like, mechanically, like, shh. Nope. Nope. It's just a little boop boop on the wrist. Not even reach into a pocket. Boop, boop, on the arm. Yep. So, on the rainy planet, what was he doing? Yeah. Oversight. Oh, yeah. Well, he was too distracted by that droid. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> he Maybe he learned his lesson because flying away, he's like, my butt's wet. The seat's my butt's wet. wet. This did is I awful. pee or did I? Nobody will know now. Nobody will know. <laughs> <laughs> he he left it open because he accidentally peed his pants. And oh. Everybody's like, "What's going? On? Oh, I just left my canopy open. No big yeah, deal. Yeah. Plausible deniability at all times. Like, why does it smell like piss? Oh, the rain on that planet smells like piss. Yeah, sulfur rain. Yep. Uria rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> so, so as a kid, I was so stupid. I thought rain was God washing his hands. And acid rain was him taking a piss on us. I was like six, and we lived nearby this factory. Like, I, <laughs> okay, I you know, stupid doesn't have an age. Stupid is infinity. It is inevitable. Okay. <laughs> this R five. He's got yeah. some stats here. Yeah. So, so the green is good. Yeah. That looks like a ninety-five. I would percent good say so um i also see a colored thing with a little indicator the yep, arrow indicating in the, in the green zone super green this is this is so green like you take your helmet yep. off you get extra strong what do you think this histogram is that can't uh, be composition because what should be nitrogen oxygen or inert something in oxygen right i don't, I don't hear a voice change so it has to be nitrogen. Does it? Or it just needs to be of similar density? Well, even would your ear be... So if you had an inert gas that's not nitrogen, would you be able to hear frequency changes? Yeah, I guess so. So if you were to be in a nitrogen atmosphere, 80% like Earth, that's how the molecules in the air move. And so they move at the right speeds to oscillate your, your eardrums. If you were to be in a very heavy atmosphere, like they would, the sound would transfer through the medium differently. So I think mm -hmm. everything would just be shifted lower in frequency, higher, right? Maybe. And I think yeah. any shift from nitrogen, it may be smaller or bigger shifts, right? But I think we'd still be able to hear it. It would be. 
Oh, you know what? It's like when you hear sound differently underwater, but it would just be less extreme. Yeah. So because we hear no sound shift, it's got to be the normal mix. Earth-like atmosphere. Well, maybe maybe in Star Wars, the normal mix isn't Earth-like. Maybe this histogram is some ridiculously complex combination of inert gases and oxygen. Mm Mm-hmm. I interpreted this as lining up with this red and green, which oh. doesn't feel good because there's lots of stuff in the red <laughs> and very few things in the red in the green. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is this is this is probably a histogram. Maybe, in fact, maybe this is like hydrogen over here and there's heavy elements over there. So there's a lot of these light guys, which is uh, kind of reasonable. Kind of reasonable. Yeah. Okay. 70% confidence. <laughs> Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, maybe you should have been nicer to me. Maybe I'd give you a 90% confidence. 70% of the time, it's 95% good. Mm -hmm. This is the city center of the Mandalorian ruins. Yeah, I I just liked the the look. I wanted to know more. Like, why do they build buildings like this? Why did they build it underground so extensively? Why not build a surface settlement with minimal stuff underground? Right. Why have it so cavernous? Like you're heading all the way down. It's really cool. I kind of want to know. <laughs> it's it's designed for a jetpack civilization. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Actually, maybe. Mm. Also, I guess there's some defenses because you kind of have a you know earth above you, mm. rocks above you, so you're kind of protected from bombardment. All right. I didn't know why. I didn't know if this was like the cavernous nature of it was an artifact of the perch, where where the imperial people fucked up Mandalore. Um, but I think that doesn't make sense. I think what you're saying makes sense is that they were already underground stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was curious about this as well because this is much more building than we've seen any Mandalorians do in the past. Yeah. And so this suggests that they have some type of civil civil engineering at least, right? you, you got to build your cities. And, and a whole society with specialization and different you know economic roles Mm -hmm. not just badass warriors right i mean i guess we've seen the forager the what's this person the the woman that makes the weapons blacksmith beskar smith yes 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 she has a name she has a title but we've never met like a mandalorian office worker you know, the armorer, the armorer. That's right. There's got to be exactly. There's got to be <laughs> office workers, right? Because yeah. the logistics of just getting that city to function, getting people like food and water, there, yeah. there's got to be some type of officer doing that, and right. we've never seen that. I, I'm a Mandalorian banker. Anchor, like you tell them the news, like that you read that type of anchor. No banker. Oh, banker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Filling in spreadsheets and stuff. That's right. Aggressively, in a combat fashion. <laughs> Do you need a loan? Come to Badass Bank. Pew, 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 pew. I never take pew, off. Pew, pew, pew. Lowest interest rate for you. Pew, 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 pew. pew. Come <laughs> everywhere. Come on, come on all. Mandalore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that has to happen. Look how big this city is. Yeah, that's right. This would be like a tribe if they didn't have organizational stuff to function yeah. with this much density. Heck, even waste management. Oh, very has got to be a Mandalorian waste management officer. Oh, yeah. And all be. the jobs you could think of, somebody has to be doing them here. Mm-hmm. In full armor all the time. Somebody does Mandalorian YouTube. That's right. And maybe we can find their armor in the bottom of the planet. Okay, so this mm-hmm. is the Beskar bounty that when... when Din is captured. There's like that eyeball robot guy, and there's so much Beskar on the ground. A leg panel, head, Ooh, another I head. Noticed. It's a bunch of helmets. Oh, a bunch of helmets. Yeah, people have been fighting over this, killing each other over this, and there's just piles and piles of it. We saw in season one when the Imperial guy offered like two little blick blocks of Beskar to to the Mando. And, and that was like a big price. Like there's tons of Beskar down here. So people just don't know this is ex- this exists? I think they don't know because everyone thinks Mandalore is irradiated and cursed. 
Uh, so I guess the curse, the people think is the curse, but it's like there's the radiation giving off over time and decaying away. And so nobody's going down here, mm-hmm. except maybe a few stragglers that were like trying to see Mandalore, but they all get caught by this guy. And this is only one cave. What if there are other caves with other of these, these bad guys? Like there could be lots of best guard down here, which has huge implication, implications for restarting the Mandalorian race. Right. Or just if people find out that this Beskar exists, mm-hmm. many factions could come in, try to stick their claim. There could be wars and disputes. That's right. That's right. And Mandalore could be caught in the crossfire. Whew. So Bo-Katan needs to very quickly make a call to arms to all Mandalorians in the galaxy. Come home. Defend this. Without but, letting right. others know that they're coming home because... There may not be enough Mandalorians to defend it against the larger forces at work. So you got to get the, the get the notice out, but do it quietly. I didn't even think about this. This is important cool, right? point. Cool. cool, right? Right? Yeah. So cool. I love Mandalorians. This is Bo-Katan. Okay, okay, okay. So, so Bo-Katan, Grogu goes after to find her, but but look where she's living. Look look how she lives. Austere. Okay, I like the fashion. Austere. Your Majesty. That's her throne, right? Yeah. That's that's her helmet, right? Yeah. Is that a blanket? Does she sleep here? She is she like okay? Like should we should we check in on her? Like she's not sleeping in bed. She's sleeping on this on this chair all day. I mean, it looks like a pillow and sheet at least. Yeah. So she's like obsessed about this chair they won't even like lay down on the floor like she's yeah. spending all of her time there she getting like food delivered like she won't even go out like does she even like work out and train why would she she's not fighting anyone she's just sitting there on the throne all day yeah is she like depressed Do we need to, like she yeah mental health issues maybe i mean i would buy it she's like she was the leader of her people and then she crashed like the society crashed on her watch yeah hmm. i think we need to take care of this girl yeah, not, it's not even like a bed chamber somewhere. That's right. Just constant wind from the outside. Or maybe there's a windows. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's a good oh, yeah, it's got to be windows. It's got to be windows. <laughs> just constantly just ocean sounds at all. I mean, ocean sounds are nice, but not the winds. Yeah, sleeping there on the throne. But her ship, her, her ship. ship is so cool. Look how they get the direction thrust correct. Mm-hmm. It slightly angles forward to slow and you down, down. Mm-hmm. To, to levitate it and to slow it down. But then as it's coming to zero relative velocity to the ground, it makes them fully vertical. Mm-hmm. So that it's no longer pushing it backwards. Mm-hmm. And it just nice. Oh, so cool. So cool. Even the wings, they jiggle just a little bit. Because they're not mm-hmm. they're not rigid like a little toy. Like they're you know they're actual objects. They have a little bit of jig- gif. The thing I don't like about her ship is that there's an enormous amount of torque, especially when she's like, I guess I guess only when she's flying in atmosphere. These wings point forward, and if there's a little bit of jitter, they like get caught by the wind, right? Like right. So so the motors down here that control the angle of mm-hmm. these things got to be super strong. Which maybe okay. I mean I don't know. I don't know who made this ship. Maybe it can only go into vertical mode when it's below a certain speed. Sure. If you were to if you were to do the up mode when you're going too fast, it would rip right off. Right, right. I mean, I'm I think okay that's... with it having like electronic controls that they're like mm-hmm. they're like convertibles now. Like you can press the button to open up the the roof, but it only does it if you're under some speed. I'm okay with that. What I'm saying is like when she re-entered onto the planet into the when she entered into the planet's atmosphere, like. She's going at speed, and you can see the wings mm-hmm. jiggle like too yeah, fast. That's, that's gonna rip it up. But but okay, maybe these are super strong engineering. Whoever designed this, yeah, good job. And it's it's it could be flexible materials that have a lot of play, but they're actually really strong. Like if you look at modern aircraft and you look at their wings, they're not rigid; they bounce. Yeah, in fact, that can help relieve stress because they're moving with the pressures. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's, it's freaky when you look at it, but it's it's totally right. <laughs> the one thing I didn't like was it's so complex maintaining that. 
there's gonna be a problem she's got that droid the droid must take care of it all droids taking care of it. Droid. Droid. Yeah, I mean, it's not a problem for us humans okay <laughs> <laughs> she's got more important things to think about like not wearing her helmet okay she lands on the planet i guess she doesn't do the atmosphere test because she trusts grogu okay um <laughs> she comes down with her helmet on okay first yeah. of all super badass super look at this so cool I like that Mandalorian look of like just the mass. You can't see their feelings like they're assessing mm -hmm. the situation. She has her helmet on because like yeah. you don't know what's down here. Combat ready. Yeah. She looks kind of stiff, but I get it. Like she's keeping her hands next to her pistols. Yeah. And she takes her helmet off. I, I, I understand that she's, you know, like a rebel Mandalorian. She's not like following the creed anymore. But you could take your helmet off in a bar, in a restaurant. Yeah. At yeah, home. Yeah. yeah. But this is a combat. This is could it get attacked any time? And you know a Mandalorian. That's right. She's there trouble. trying to rescue Din, which means that you know there's something bad down here. But I get it. She's like, this is my city. I want to see you with my bare eyes. But like, maybe on the way back, like, <laughs> <laughs> who knows what's out here? Like, danger, danger, yeah. danger. Uh, my greed. family ruled it all. Now it's a tomb. <laughs> He's like, uh, you okay? <laughs> Let's go. All of a sudden, this is Fast and the Furious. Family. Family. It's about family. 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 She's the badass. She's super cool. No, this is the enemy. Disarmed so fast. He, he used a club and took out both of her guns. <laughs> yeah. She could have put her arms apart. He would have missed. I mean, she gets disarmed, she handles it, kills them, it's all yeah, cool. absolutely. But still, don't get disarmed. Right. You have the tactical advantage of having the option of range. Maintain it. Yeah. Sit back up. Maintain it. Yeah. Also, are these guys impervious to blasters? Let's watch that again. I don't... I don't know. Did he get hit? Oh, she just missed. She just missed. But that was a bad engagement by the guy. How so? He charged What, what should he have done? Run away. Oh, really? Well, I mean, if you charge a person with a gun, mm -hmm. they're going to shoot you. That's right. So you're banking on them missing. So what do you do? You run away, show them that you're not a challenge or not a threat, so they don't shoot you. I guess, yeah, you're going to be like, oh, on my back, what are you doing? And then, <laughs> and you hope the Mandalorian's like, oh, shoot, these guys yeah. these guys are just checking it out. Like, they're, they're okay, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just run away. They're not going to, you, you know. Yeah, that's right. That's so, right. If you don't show that you're a threat, then she may not shoot you. Right. But if you charge her, she definitely will shoot you. Because you made her have to. Yeah, and she's a Mandalorian. She happened to miss. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's luck. Maybe she did it on purpose to draw him in closer. Mm. Mm. Play she with your prey. She wants the up close kill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's nothing as satisfying as arm blade. <laughs> Ridiculous. And here she is, helmet on. It makes so much sense. She just got in that fight, a super awesome yeah. fight with the dark saber. She got in that awesome fight with that bad guy, and then now uh, helmet off. Making pog juice. That's fun. What happened? I saved your life. Thank you. Don't thank me until you see them. So they're gonna go find the mines at the at the, the the living water at the bottom of the mines. So she's like, alright, take my helmet, we're gonna go. Put your helmet on. Oh yeah, back in the zone. Back in the zone. We might even counter combat. I got I got a sensor here. The, yeah. It does no good to have a sensor on your helmet if it's if you can't see the interface. But okay, maybe this will put on her helmet in a bit when they go downstairs. They're now downstairs. That's a lot of stairs. It's hard to build. It helmet wasn't off. that long ago. Helmet off. There could You'd be all sorts it. of places back here where people are hiding, ready to attack. And she could right, see it if she has that little sensor thing on. Yeah, there's wild animals here. Mm -hmm. Like not even, you don't even know if there's like intelligent people. Yeah. people yeah. with guns and blasters and who knows what there's also wild animals who could be like cowering behind something you're walking up to you want to be ready oh yeah like those little alligator guys yeah or even there could be another one of those eyeball mechanized guys yeah and you she'd see him a lot sooner if she had a little sensor guy on he's right yeah. it's right there 
keen and at all this just have the head protection. Seeing head protection. Kind, yeah, what if something falls? Head. Something falls, hit your head. With Beskar helmet, no problem. Bear head, problem. I know the Mandalorian Creed is a little stifling, but this is reasonable. But I think the Mandalorian Creed only applies to the <laughs> the children of the Watch. <laughs> I don't think it applies to everyone. That's why if she some... says that he's a cult. Oh. I don't know. We need to look this up. Actually, I guess I guess if there are any lore aficionados, tell us. Tell us, is the always wearing a helmet on, is that specific to the children of the Watch? Or is that a general thing that Mandalorians do? And and, and Bo-Katan's actually the rebel. That's a good question. I don't know. Again, killing each other for reasons too confusing to explain. It made us weak. Gotta stay united. And to maintain your battle readiness and your strength. I mean, this is some of the lore that I was talking about. Uh-huh. What I want to know. I mean, there's a conflict of some unknown origin with unknown politics and Mandalorians fighting. I mean, it'd be interesting to know how that happened within that culture. Yeah, and I'd like to do it all with helmets on. Helmets on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wear a helmet. That's why you brought it with you. It's like when people like bring their ride bicycles and they bring their helmet with them. Like you've already brought it with you, just wear it. Oh yeah, so this is this is kind of hard to see what it is. This is um, so um, Din got pulled under the water when he went to bathe in the waters of the mines of Mandalore, and by that large creature, and Bo jumped in to rescue him, and she goes down like way far, jetpacking through the water, and then has to turn them around and jetpack way back up and then they they emerge from the water and this is them emerging from the water do they not have the bends i don't know yeah Does is, they have the helmet on is their suit pressurized i think not oh well, it must be i mean they can he's they can survive in space with the helmet on well, let's say they, they go down it look like maybe they went down maybe 50 meters 100 meters of water deep so you're talking Ten that's what five to ten atmospheres of yeah. extra pressure that's assuming crushing. you're at one atmosphere at the top you're going from one to ten atmospheres and back up maybe the mandalorian armor suit can hold that but it's cloth but it's cloth okay if you have the bends what if your what if your face is pressurized at one i think it's gotta be your, your body got, things gotta be your whole body is that true yeah so i guess if you're so i guess first of all what is the bends the bends is when you surface from low, from deep depths of water, you do it too quickly. The differential pressure, I think, of the nitrogen in your blood causes them to to form little to form little bubbles, and now you have bubbles in your bloodstream. Your that's not good for your bloodstream. It needs to have a continuous fluid so that it can push it. Um, if you get an air bubble, it can squish instead of flowing. Um, if that gets in your brain, now you have problems. Um, so that's the bends. So so. One thing is, I think it needs to be your entire body pressurized because unless you have your entire body pressurized, then say if I have my hand unpressurized, then I could have that nitrogen um, nucleation of bubbles and that could happen there and then travel anywhere else. So I think you have to be your whole body. That being said, I, I think it also has to be a fast transition. Like if you come up slowly, you're okay. It's really like when you go up quickly. What if you go down quickly and then come up quickly? That's a good question. So I think you might be okay to do that. Maybe. As long as you do also, it. Also, it could be that the cloth in the Mandalorian getup will respond to the pressure and get hard. And then when it comes back up to one atmosphere, it's it gets cloth again. Mm-hmm. It could be. It's like smart cloth. I mean, possible. Because these are some of the best warriors in the galaxy and they've acquired some of the best tech. Like they're not just they're not doing physical swords everywhere. Like they've got tools. Maybe part of the clothing is the type of suit. Mm-hmm. So if anybody knows, what happens if you go down in water fast and back up? Can you avoid the bends? Because if you do it quickly, are you okay? Or are we gonna need that smart cloth to counteract the bends? I don't know. Yeah, please tell us. Please tell us. Also, if you know if the Mandalorians have that smart cloth, let us know. Cool. 
that's the end of the episode. So what's going to happen now? I don't know. I don't know. But we do know that Din Djarin is a child child of the watch again. He bathed in the living waters. So by Creed, he's back in the club. Also, when he did that, did you see Bo-Katan's face? Like she was, she was lighting up because she saw that there are Mandalorians out there in the galaxy that are still loyal to the Mandalorian way of life. Now, Din's not going to be a leader in that. Like he's, he's not that personality, but there are people that still love Mandalore. That would be Mandalorians for her. Yeah. And she really lit up when he stopped walking and said, this is the way about her father sacrificing himself for Mandalore. And she was like, hmm. Hmm. There's still honor amongst our people, even though they're scattered to the winds. And they found all that Beskar. So if she can convince them to come back home, she's ready to armor people up. That's right. It's going to be tough. The Empire will be an eye on the Beskar. Who knows knows what other factions, the Huts, will be eyeing it. Yeah, everyone's going to be super valuable. Everyone's going to want it. Oh, yeah. Sounds like there's going to be upcoming fights for this. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. We'll see you in Mandalorian Episode 3. Yeah. See you guys next time. See you then.